Hey everyone, today we're gonna to look at how to build a quick and interactive Airtable dashboard. So we're gonna look at some of the pain areas of Airtable and how to overcome them easily using our application. So one of them is Airtable API allows you to retrieve only 100 rows, but we're gonna retrieve a lot more than that. And well, see how to do it easily. We can build some charts. We can use this embed control to view Airtable data exactly as it is and uh, well we can also see how to manage users efficiently so another pain area is if you want if you have multiple users and want some data to be accessible only by some particular users the usual way is you create multiple views and each views url you share it with your users that gets quickly tedious and uh, cumbersome and it's not the best way so we're going to see how to overcome that too and we're also going to see how to add some basic CRUD operations for example here i have all my data I can view the information on the right hand side, update, delete and do a lot more. So it's going to be fun. Stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the video. So I have a blank screen with some basic layouts added and let's quickly start adding the controls we want to build our dashboard. So I'm going to go to the control section and quickly add in a table grid control to display our data. Now the next step is to of course connect a table to Drona HQ. To do that, click on any control, click on the data icon over here, go to the connector section and click on select connector. You will find the Airtable ready in front of your screen. Continue with Airtable. Choose the action you want to perform. In this case, I want to find rows because I want to find rows based on a certain criteria. So I'll just click on that and do continue. Click on the account you have if you have one configured. If you don't have an Airtable account configured, you click this manage Airtable accounts icon and click on connect Airtable. Here you can give a relevant name for your account. So you can add your own name. The API key is your personal API key. So if you head over to Airtable accounts, you will find that over here. And you just need to copy and paste it over there in that screen. And you also need a base ID. Again, if you just Google search Airtable base ID, you will get this particular link. Uh, REST API link and if you choose your workspace or the base you want the link for you will get this docs where here you can find the ID of your base. So that is it once you enter your API key and your base ID enter the table name you want to perform operations on. So for example I have my Airtable screen open and my table name is sales data which is where I'm going to draw my dashboard make some CRUD operations and other stuff. So do that and click on save. I already have mine configured with the name Akash. So I'm just going to proceed with that. And uh, once you click next, you have to give a connector name. So get rose data and you need to select the column you want to search and the value you want to search for. These are compulsory fields. So uh, you, if you want to search, if you want to retrieve all rows, what you can quickly do is just enter a dummy column and name it like choose and then put one for each value in the column. So that will enable you to search all columns. But for example, now if I want to retrieve only those columns of the city Yangon, then I can just write column to search city over here and value to search Yangon. And base ID we need, which let me quickly copy paste it from here. And yeah. So for table name, if you head over to my air table, you can see that my table name is sales data where I'm operating on. So I'll just write sales data over here. And the other stuff we can leave blank for now. Uh, you can click on refresh response to see if it's working correctly. And in case something goes wrong, a refresh response usually fixes it. So you can see my data is being retrieved correctly. Awesome. And now we can just click on test and finish to complete choose our keys and um, whatever keys we choose here will be displayed in our table grid. So let me just display all the fields for now. And uh, maybe it's a lot of fields so we can maybe skip some. But uh, yep, that is about it. If I click save now, the formula has been saved as you can see in the toast. And uh, yep, that is all there is to it. Let's quickly preview and see if all is good. So it's loading. Give it a minute. And as you can see here, it's retrieving all the data fine. It's retrieving 100 records. And well, everything looks good. 
But remember, I told you in the intro that this is one of the problems of Airtable where it's only able to retrieve 100 rows. But we're going to use the cursor based pagination and Drona HQ to work around that and retrieve more rows uh, with ease. And let me just show you how to do that quickly. So, to do that, head back to the connector section where we just added our connector. And uh, we need to set the offset. Uh, whatever offset air table is giving us we need to configure that to the table grid so let me use keywords and set the offset to table grid dot properties dot offset and if you scroll all the way down enable cursor based pagination where my offset key is output or you can search from here output dot offset and there is no has more key so we can ignore that but now if i test and finish I should also allow pagination over here and change this to cursor based and click on save. Once it saves, we are good to go. So now if I save the whole application and preview it, you can see the 100 rows have been retrieved, but over here you can see my pagination option. So if I click on this button, it will automatically retrieve the next set of 100 rows for you and if i click again i can browse through all my rows uh, via pages like this so this is a really cool function which enables us to overcome the limitation of Airtable and allows us for greater efficiency so uh let's quickly set up the edit uh, screen too for this i just need to drag and drop a couple of controls from here so for example to display my invoice id I just need to display the invoice ID and change the text property to invoice ID. I also need to go to the bind data section and choose the invoice ID as uh, from the control screen. Uh, the invoice ID I want to display is the one selected on the table grid. So choose our screen which is employee modify and choose the control table grid. And what field from table grid we want to display? The invoice ID. Awesome. So similarly, I just need to add multiple fields for all the data I want and configure it the same way. I'm just going to do that real quickly. So I've done all that. I've added a bunch of text fields and connected to my table grid. I've also added two buttons for updating and deleting. And I also created a menu page. You can see in the left hand side and quickly added that to my home screen by, you know, going to this properties and then choosing my sticky menu page as the menu. So that's about all the changes I did. And if you remember, I also told you that user management in Airtable is kind of difficult because if you want to show different data for different users, you have to create views for each and every one of them and then display that view to those users. And it's a cumbersome process and a lot of pain. So the easy way to do that over here is you just go to your Airtable database and you add a new column called user email and in there you put all the emails which have access to some particular records so for example here i have access to this record but other people from my organization have access to the other records and so on so now what this allows us to do is easily use a filter to retrieve the data we want so for example i just need to go to the uh, data again click on the connector and modify the connector once the screens open up now in the column to search i can put my user email and value to search for rather than using static values you can use the dynamic value of user email which will ensure that whichever user is logged in only those records are visible to that person if you want to learn more about how user login is managed in drona hq click on the link in the description it's really easy no need for any login screen or implementation everything is auto managed on our side but uh, that aside i think we are done we have set this user uh, email filter up and now we should be able to view the filters only we have access to. And uh, if we, well, go to the admin panel home screen for now, uh, let's see what's happening there. I have two graphs on my screen already added, which again, the same thing, add your Airtable connector, retrieve data and configure it to display some charts. If you want to learn more about how to create some amazing charts, view the Plotly chart video in our description, but uh, that's easy. And what I want to show you here is our embed control, which we actually configured specially for Airtable. So what this allows us to do is let me just go and search my embed control. 
It gives you the exact familiar interface you're used to with Airtable. So if your users like the Airtable interface and prefer to work around with that, you can simply use the embed control. So we need a link so that this embed control can embed something and use it. So for that, we need to head over to the uh, our Airtable database and just click on the share view, click on embed view on your site and well, copy just this URL. We don't need the whole code just this url and let's paste it back in our control awesome uh once that's saved let's see preview it and see how it looks so once it loads give it a minute uh yeah so once it loads you can see that uh well everything looks fine i get my embed control with the exact air table interface i wanted I can apply filters here, I can sort them, I can hide some fields and well this is the familiar user interface I am used to. Uh, this is awesome but now you might be wondering how do I implement the user access over here. Like again I am able to view all my records, I don't want that, I only want to view records I have access to. So that is also simple, all you need to do is play around with URL queries a bit. So let me show you what I mean. If I copy the control and if I paste it in a new browser. I get the screen with all the data and now I just need to apply a filter and add on to this URL. So I'll share a link in the description below which will show you what types of filter you can apply and how to do it. But basically you just add on to these conditions. For example, view control equal to on is a condition, background color equal to cyan is a condition and you do that after using the question mark string. So I'm just going to add another condition, display only those records where the filter user email equal to my email. So filter user email equal to Akash at whatever my email is. And now if I enter this, you can see that the filter will be applied and I'm only viewing those records I have access to. So we can do this dynamically in our app to ensure that whichever user is currently logged in, only their information is displayed. Let me show you how to quickly do that. I need to go to the custom formula and edit the control. And here I'm going to add a function called concatenate, which is used to merge two strings. And what I'm going to do is and filter user email equal to, and I'm going to set our user email of the user who is logged in. So now I've created this dynamic custom URL and if I save and validate, it should work. Let me quickly preview it to ensure that it really works. So just refresh it to view it and uh, yeah, you can see the filter has been applied and you can view it. Well, you can still kind of remove the filter over here to you know view all the records or you can even open it in a new browser to view it but to prevent those all you have to do is ensure that this external browser is disabled so that the option to open it in a new tab is not present and they can't edit the url from there and what you can also do is in the url instead of putting view controls on you can keep view controls off so now the user won't even be able to edit the filters from the inbuilt interface and it's totally safe and he'll only be able to access the records he is allowed to. So yep, that is pretty much it. So we're almost done and the only thing left to do is add the action flows for our update and delete controls to make it fully functional and complete. So well for that I have you need something called a record ID to update or delete or handle individual rows. So to do that, you just need to head back to your table grid control and uh, what you can do is you can also display this records.id while displaying any all the other information and I've created a hidden field. So whatever the record the user selects, it will be same way how I accessed controls. If you, okay, this is the table grid. If I click on the record field and if I go to controls, I have set it up to my table grid control and table grid dot uh, records dot id so awesome now whatever the record the user selects in the table grid that will be displayed here 
and I can use this hidden record ID to internally update and delete my data. So let's head back to the update button now and say I want to update my data. I'll go to the action flow and add an action. Let me jump to my server side actions and click Airtable. We want to update a row, so choose that and choose your Airtable account. We need the base ID again. Let me quickly copy that from this page. Table name is sales data. And record ID to update is there in our record ID field. So choose that dynamic field. So whatever field the user selects, that is going to be updated. So now we just need to set up the data for all this invoice ID. And uh, well, you can just choose the fields we have. So for invoice ID, I have my invoice ID field. For city, I have my city field. Uh, you can just set up all the fields here and once you're done, we can click on continue and give a new act, name the action. So update record and click finish. So if you've seen any of the other videos on creating admin panels, this process is literally the same for everything. If it's a success, you will add a success toast. So let me just click a toast to display that it's been successful and uh, we'll write data updated successfully and display success and well if it's a failure if there's some error occurred it's always a good idea to keep an action here so that you know it's actually failed so let me quickly duplicate the success toast and modify it type will be error title will change it to error data has not been updated successfully so continue change the name to display failure and yep so if it's successful we also want to well uh, refresh the screen so let me quickly reset screen so we can see the updated data and we want to reset the screen and well refresh screen give it a unique name and uh, well that is pretty much it so similarly you just need to repeat the same thing for the delete which i've already done let me quickly show that to you as well so if i head back to my delete button and go to my action flow it's the same thing i delete a record if it's a success i display the success toast and refresh the screen if it's a failure well i just display a toast to notify the user of that so uh that is pretty much it for our application we are done and we're ready to preview our results so let me just click preview and if you wait, give it a minute to load. It's loaded our table successfully. And if you see it's retrieved 91 records because it's retrieved all the records for which only I have access to and not every other record. And well, it's displaying the information here. I have the buttons to update and delete. If I go to my home screen, I can see my charts. I can see my embed loading up. And you can see the embed is successfully loaded with again, only the emails I have access to in the Airtable view, which is pretty handy. And uh, let me quickly try updating and deleting the data. So if I well click delete over here and uh, you can see deletes data and similarly update will also work. So that is it. I hope you liked the video and learned how to integrate your Airtable with Drona HQ to make it much more efficient, easy to access and connectable with tons of other services now like slack or some other database you have like mysql google sheets and whatnot so well check out drona hq today have a nice day thank you for watching the video